Hello, I'm Johan Andersson, I'm from Paradox Interactive and I'll be basically talking about Victoria 2. Victoria 2 is kind of like different from most of our grand strategy game. This is the, the, the game where it's kind of like, it's not focused on warfare like Archeiron or uh, just pure empire building like Europe and Rosales. Victoria 2 is a political economical simulation where you move where you create a country and take it for nationalism and industrialization. Victoria 2, as, as, as I said, is an economical game in its uh, core. A large part of this is uh, the world market. The world market is a common uh, pool of economics and goods that uh, transcribes the entire world. Uh, why, do, why do we have a common huge market? Well, in this era, it was the biggest free market era ever seen in the world, and we never ever seen one again. Politics is the second big part in Victoria. Um, what we've changed here in uh, compared to our previous game is to make uh, the politics more in depth. To make every pop has their own issues. We've also made uh, different types of. Uh, elections depending on what type of states you are so it will be a more in-depth uh, political system. Uh, one thing that's important here is that it's not just countries that are alone there's also diplomacy between each and every country. We've learned quite a lot of how developed diploma diplomatic models um, through our games like Cartier-Iron, uh, Europe and Rosales, Crusader Kings etc. We're we'll looking quite a lot of what we've been doing in the latest expansion to EU3 and we may be using some stuff from there. It's not just an economical, political, diplomatic game. There's of course still war. There still will be the possibilities to fight the Crimean Wars and the American Civil Wars. You will be able to recruit armies and crush your enemies and drive them before you, but you will not hear the lamentations. One of the things that our fans like with our games is that we are so historical driven while still allowing the freedom to do whatever you want with your countries. So what we're trying to do is to make Victoria into the perfect blend of historicity where you have a good gameplay and good game mechanics that drives the historical flows and not just having rigid uh, events and crutches to destroy the gameplay but having reasons that uh, causes and effects to make an historical driven gameplay, which worked out splendidly great in the EU3 and his Hot uh, Iron series. One of the things we've always talked about is that our games are driven and made of made on maps. Um, so what we've had maps that have been small just covering Europe and maps that are huge like Hot Iron 3 with 10,000 provinces. Um, what we've tried to do in Victoria 2 was to make a map that have all the things we want from it. So we took, we basically took the map from one of the biggest user mods for Victoria 1. We hired a guy that made that map and had it adapted into making a perfect map for Victoria 2. The funniest thing with Victoria is that we actually are the only game that simulates every single human living in the world. We have uh, full population units that covers every person's uh, personal beliefs and opinions and so and everything of this matters in the long run in the game. 